The big question in our timeline is why civilization did not emerge sooner. Why did it take so long? And why was there a delay until after 12,000 years ago before the beginnings of civilization became apparent? The Lost Ice Age Civilization A foundational idea about human history suggests that there was an advanced Ice Age civilization. This civilization may have preceded and possibly influenced what are now known as the Six Cradles of Civilization. Mesopotamia, Egypt, India, China, the Indies, and Mesoamerica. This concept challenges the traditional narrative and invites a deeper exploration into our past. It is more accurate to describe the current understanding of human history as a story filled with puzzlement and incomplete fragments. The commonly taught narrative envisions a series of ups and downs with a mostly straightforward evolutionary progress. Initially, humans existed as hunter-foragers, a phase that could extend back hundreds of thousands of years. It's important to recognize that anatomically, modern humans were not the only humans. Neanderthals, who existed from approximately 400,000 years ago to about 40,000 years ago, were certainly human. They interbred with anatomically modern humans, leaving Neanderthal genes in our DNA. Similarly, the Denisovans, who lived around 300,000 to perhaps as recently as 30,000 years ago, also interbred with modern humans. These species provide a background of humans who did not quite resemble us today. The earliest anatomically modern human skeletal remains found in Morocco, date back to approximately 310,000 years ago. This raises the question of what our ancestors were doing after that period, including the activities of Neanderthals. One of the persistent puzzles is why it took so long for civilization to develop when creatures physically identical to us existed for over 300,000 years. From the studies conducted on cranial structures, it appears that they had brains similar to ours with the same neural wiring. If humanity had been around for such an extended period, why didn't the process to create civilizations occur sooner? The story of anatomically modern humans has continually evolved. Initially, it was believed that there were no anatomically modern humans before 50,000 years ago. This was later revised to 196,000 years ago and then further extended to 310,000 years ago. There are numerous missing pieces in this historical puzzle. The overarching question remains, why did it take so long for civilization to develop? Why did humanity wait until after 12,000 years ago, or more accurately after 10,000 years ago, to begin seeing the early signs of civilization in regions like Turkey? Following this, there was a relatively slow adoption of agriculture. By 6,000 years ago, ancient Sumer began to emerge as a civilization, and around the same time, the pre-dynastic period in ancient Egypt showed signs of what would become the dynastic civilization. Interestingly, around the same period, the Indus Valley civilization appeared seemingly out of nowhere. This civilization remained lost until the 1920s, when railway workers accidentally discovered some of its ruins. One remarkable aspect of the Indus Valley Civilization is the discovery of a steatite seal depicting an individual in a recognizable yoga posture, Mula Bandasana. This posture involves a significant contortion of the ankles and twisting of the feet. This advanced yoga posture dates back 5,000 years, raising questions about how such practices developed so early. The Yellow River Civilization in China also shows signs of development around the same period, approximately five to 6,000 years ago. This simultaneous emergence of civilizations across different regions is perplexing, especially considering the seemingly natural evolutionary processes that should have led to the rise of civilization. 
the presence of similar ideas being carried down and manifested in various civilizations worldwide is both puzzling and disturbing. This is particularly evident when examining the radical break that occurred not just in human history, but in the story of all life on Earth, the Younger Dryas event. This was an extinction-level event that led to the demise of all great megafauna of the Ice Age. After the Younger Dryas event, the first signs of what would become the gradual steps towards civilization began to appear. Humanity transitioned from the Upper Paleolithic, marking the end of the Old Stone Age, into the Neolithic period. This transition supposedly set the wheels in motion for the development of civilization. However, what happened before this transition and why it occurred suddenly remains unclear. There is a strong sense that major pieces are missing from our historical narrative. It is often suggested that there was an advanced lost civilization during the Ice Age, though this has not been definitively proven. This hypothesis is proposed to address some of the lingering questions about prehistory. Investigating these possibilities is worthwhile especially considering the Younger Dryas event was a massive global cataclysm, whatever its cause, and it is strange that shortly after this event, the first signs of civilization began to emerge. Gobekli Tepe, the world's oldest temple. The current understanding in mainstream archaeology suggests that after the Younger Dryas event, Civilizations emerged in different parts of the globe with many similarities, but they developed independently. It is seen as a coincidence that the first major civilizations, Sumer, Egypt, the Indus Valley and China, appeared around the same time. This is the main view held by most experts. These civilizations did not simply appear overnight. Rather, they gradually built up. Initially, there were settlements, followed by various dynamics in their development and the role of agriculture. The process was not straightforward. Settlements first stabilized where people lived, then agriculture was adopted, and subsequently urban centers began to form. This sequence of development seems entirely reasonable and makes sense within the framework of evolutionary and social progress occurring over thousands of years before the emergence of Sumer. Despite this significant investigations into the possibility of a lost civilization were undertaken. Extensive research, including scuba diving around the world to search for underwater structures, aimed to uncover remnants of such a civilization. However, these efforts did not yield conclusive evidence, leading to a temporary shift in focus toward other areas of study, such as the role of psychedelics in the evolution of human culture. The discovery of Gebekli Tepe in Turkey became a pivotal moment. Gebekli Tepe, dated to approximately 11,600 years ago, is an extraordinary megalithic site that predates Gantija in Malta, previously considered the oldest of its kind. The site attracted immense interest from both the Turkish government, eager to capitalize on its tourism potential, and from archaeologists worldwide. Excavations in the surrounding region, extending into Syria, the Jordan Valley, Jericho, and even Cyprus across the Mediterranean, revealed what Turkish archaeologists now refer to as the Tash Tepela civilization, or the Stone Hills civilization. This civilization is characterized by semi-subterranean circular structures and the use of T-shaped megalithic pillars, though these pillars are not always as large as those found at Gobekli Tepe. Gobekli Tepe itself appears to be the culmination of the Stone Hills civilization's achievements rather than its beginning. The construction date of Gobekli Tepe, around 11,600 years ago, marks the end of the Younger Dryas and the onset of cultural developments that would fully manifest at the site. During the construction of Gobekli Tepe, agriculture began to take root transitioning the creators from hunter-foragers to cultivators of plants. 
Gobekli Tepe is recognized as the oldest fully elaborated megalithic site known to date, although further excavations may uncover even older structures. The excavated portions reveal almost circular enclosures walled with relatively small stones, housing pairs of megalithic pillars. Enclosure D in particular contains the two largest upright megaliths, each standing approximately 18 feet tall and weighing around 20 tons. While the construction and transportation of these pillars are impressive, they are not considered extraordinary feats given the proximity of the stone quarry. A fascinating aspect of Gobekli Tepe is the alignment of its pillars. Research suggests that enclosure D aligns with the rising of the star Sirius, while other enclosures map different rising points of the same star, indicating a sophisticated understanding of astronomy by its builders. This level of architectural and astronomical knowledge is remarkable, especially considering that Gobekli Tepe was created by hunter foragers before the widespread adoption of agriculture. The discovery of Gobekli Tepe began with a survey in the 60s by American archaeologists searching for Paleolithic material. Initially, finely cut stones protruding from the hill led them to believe they might have discovered Byzantine remains, causing them to abandon the site. It was not until the German Archaeological Institute, under the guidance of Dr. Klaus Schmidt, resumed excavations that the true significance of Gobekli Tepe was realized. The site was identified as potentially the oldest megalithic site in the world and was found in Anatolia, Turkey, where agriculture is believed to have first emerged and then gradually spread westward. Despite being created by hunter-gatherers, agriculture began to flourish around Gobekli Tepe during its decommissioning. The site was deliberately buried and transformed into what can be described as a time capsule, forming a mound known as Gobekli Tepe, meaning pot-bellied hill, or hill of the navel. This intentional burial preserved the site for millennia, allowing it to be rediscovered in modern times. Gobekli Tepe's existence from roughly 11,600 years ago to about 8,400 years ago coincides with the transition from the Upper Paleolithic to the Neolithic period. This period saw the gradual introduction and adoption of agriculture, setting the stage for the eventual rise of ancient civilizations like Sumer and Mesopotamia. However, the sudden emergence of Gobekli Tepe and its advanced architectural features raise further questions about the development and decline of early civilizations. After Gobekli Tepe, there appears to be a decline before the long, slow process of Neolithic development leads to established agricultural societies. The notion that a lost civilization introduced advanced ideas to indigenous populations, challenges conventional archaeological narratives. While it is widely accepted that agriculture spread from Anatolia to Western Europe, the idea that foundational concepts originated from a lost advanced civilization invites a re-evaluation of our understanding of human history and cultural dissemination. Who were the early humans? As early as 1.9 million years ago, Homo erectus began to spread across the globe, laying the foundation for the evolution of Homo sapiens. This early migration out of Africa involved multiple locations rather than originating from a single point, reflecting ongoing debates about the dynamics of human dispersal. The prevailing theory, known as the out-of-Africa theory, is strongly supported by substantial evidence. As members of the great ape family, humans have deep origins in Africa. This exploratory drive is deeply ingrained in human character, manifesting in the early adventures of those who left Africa to settle in diverse regions around the world. Consequently, much of anatomically modern human evolution occurred outside of Africa as well as within it. 
Given this extensive history of exploration and adaptation to various environments, a general puzzlement arises. Why did it take hundreds of thousands of years for humans to develop complex societal settlements? This question leads to a hypothesis that perhaps significant developments occurred that remain undiscovered within the archaeological record. While vast areas of the world have yet to be studied archaeologically, the mere fact of their unexplored status does not inherently indicate a missing chapter in human history. The perplexity extends beyond the 300,000-year gap. It also encompasses the presence of common iconography, myths, traditions, and spiritual ideas found globally among geographically and temporally distant cultures. These shared elements do not necessarily emerge simultaneously, suggesting that archaeology might benefit from incorporating a history of ideas alongside the traditional history of tangible artifacts. Ideas can reappear and evolve throughout human history, influencing various cultures independently. For instance, the concept of the afterlife, the destiny of the soul, and what transpires after death is a recurring theme across different civilizations. This notion manifests in diverse forms, such as the belief that the soul embarks on a journey to the heavens or the Milky Way, confronting challenges, monsters, and closed gates. The idea that the course of one's life determines their destiny in the afterlife is prevalent not only in the Americas, from South America through Mexico and into North America, but also in ancient Egypt, India, and Mesopotamia. Such widespread and consistent themes across disparate cultures suggest an inheritance of ideas, a legacy passed down from a remote common source that has been adapted and reinterpreted within each culture. This shared origin would account for both the similarities and variations in how these ideas are expressed. Another puzzling aspect is the sequence of numbers resulting from the procession of the equinoxes, which further underscores the complexity and interconnectedness of human intellectual development. In summary, the extensive exploration and migration patterns of early humans raise intriguing questions about the slow development of complex societies. The recurring themes in myths and spiritual beliefs across different cultures hint at a shared legacy of ideas that may have originated from a common, perhaps advanced, source. This challenges conventional archaeological narratives and invites a re-evaluation of our understanding of human history and cultural dissemination. Astronomical Symbolism Traditionally, it is believed that the Greeks discovered precession approximately 2,300 years ago. However, Santillana and von Dechen from the MIT and Frankfurt University argue that the knowledge of precession dates back thousands of years earlier, tracing it to an almost unbelievable ancient civilization. The precession of the equinoxes arises from the fact that Earth serves as the vantage point from which we observe the stars. Earth rotates on its axis at roughly 1,000 miles an hour at the equator and it also experiences a slow wobble on this axis. Currently, the extended North Pole points towards the star Polaris, our pole star. Due to the wobble, Polaris has not always held this position, and other stars have taken its place at various times. Occasionally, the North Pole points to empty space, resulting in periods without a pole star. Additionally, there are 12 well-known zodiac constellations that lie along the sun's path. As Earth orbits the sun, the sun appears against different zodiac constellations at various times of the year. Presently, we are in the age of Pisces, a fact reflected in the early Christians adopting the fish as their symbol. It is posited that the recognition of zodiac constellations occurred much earlier than commonly assumed. The spring equinox has historically served as a key marker of the year, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere. The primary question has been identifying which constellation rises behind the sun. 
Currently, it is Pisces, and in approximately 150 years, it will transition to Aquarius, marking the dawn of the age of Aquarius. In ancient Egyptian times, Aries was the ruling constellation, preceding Taurus and continuing backward through the zodiac over 12,500 years. This entire cycle of precession unfolds very slowly, completing roughly every 25,920 years. Observing this cycle requires more than a single human lifetime due to its gradual progression at a rate of one degree every 72 years. It appears that an ancient culture comprehended the entire precession process and identified key numerical values, with 72 being the most significant. The relationship between humans and the stars has been a fundamental aspect of human history. In ancient times, before the advent of electricity, the stars were a central topic of fascination. The absence of light pollution allowed for clear and brilliant views of the heavens, making the stars an ever-present and overwhelming presence. This primal importance of the stars influenced ideas, status, and religious explorations. The constellations of the zodiac were likely recognized much earlier than previously thought, as their consistent presence along the sun's path made them impossible to overlook. Detecting the precession of the equinoxes poses challenges, especially for ancient cultures without written or mathematical systems. However, oral traditions played a crucial role in preserving this knowledge. Unlike the written word, which can lead to the gradual loss of memory, oral traditions enable the long-term preservation of information through storytelling. A notable example from ancient Egypt involves the god Thoth, who is credited with inventing writing. Despite his pride in this invention, it was argued that writing disrupted the art of memory, as words could circulate without the accompanying wisdom to contextualize them. In contrast, cultures with strong oral traditions have successfully preserved information over extended periods by embedding it within compelling narratives. These stories serve as vehicles for information, ensuring its transmission through faithful repetition. Human beings have an inherent love for stories, and great stories provide an effective means of encoding and preserving information. Whether the storyteller is consciously aware of the information being conveyed or not, the narrative itself ensures that the knowledge is passed down through generations. This method of preservation has been a vital part of maintaining knowledge throughout history. The Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis is taken very seriously due to numerous reasons. There is significant impression and puzzlement caused by the worldwide tradition of a global cataclysm within human memory. Scientifically, it is known that many cataclysms have occurred in the past, dating back millions of years. The most well-known of these is the KPG event, which is now recognized for causing the extinction of the dinosaurs approximately 65 million or 66 million years ago. However, the question arises whether such a cataclysm occurred within the lifetime of the human species. The Mount Toba eruption around 70,000 years ago was notably severe, but a global cataclysm like the Younger Dryas fits the criteria of a worldwide disaster. This event involved significant sea level rise, both at its beginning and its end, leading to the submergence of lands that were previously above water. The Younger Dryas is an excellent candidate for explaining the global cataclysm tradition characterized by an enormous flood and the submergence of land masses. The presence of this story across various cultures worldwide suggests that the archaeological explanation attributing it to local floods is insufficient. While local populations frequently experience flooding, such as the ongoing floods in Florida, these events are recognized as local rather than global. 
the argument within archaeology often posits that a local flooding event was misinterpreted by some populations as a global flood. However, this perspective is not entirely convincing, especially considering the evidence of the Younger Dryas Epoch, during which significant flooding occurred alongside events catastrophic enough to extinguish the megafauna of the Ice Age. The Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis, abbreviated as YDIH, is supported by the work of more than 60 major scientists across various disciplines, including archaeology, and oceanography. These scientists are collectively puzzled by the sudden onset of the Younger Dryas and the presence of a distinct layer in the Earth dating back approximately 12,800 years ago. The cross-section of this layer reveals a distinct dark layer containing evidence of wildfires, including significant amounts of soot, nano-diamonds, shocked quartz, melted quartz at temperatures exceeding 2,200 degrees centigrade, and carbon microspherules. These elements serve as proxies for a cosmic impact. During the transition into the Younger Dryas, the Earth experienced a radical climate shift. Prior to this, the planet had been warming for at least 2,000 years. Around 12,800 years ago, there was a massive global temperature plunge, returning the climate to conditions similar to the peak of the Ice Age almost overnight. This rapid change is atypical, as sea levels are not expected to rise during a cooling epoch. However, a sudden sea level rise occurred at the beginning of the Younger Dryas, followed by a prolonged frozen period lasting from 12,800 to 11,600 years ago. The end of the Younger Dryas was equally dramatic, marked by a rapid warming and the occurrence of meltwater pulse 1b around 11,600 years ago, when the last glaciers collapsed into the sea. This period is tightly defined and corresponds with significant disruptions to human populations. The Clovis culture of North America vanished entirely during the Younger Dryas. Geologically, the understanding of what caused the significant temperature dip and subsequent rise during the Younger Dryas involves the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. This hypothesis provides an explanation for the rapid environmental changes observed during this period. The abrupt cessation of the global meridional overturning circulation, with the Gulf Stream being its most well-known component, is identified as the primary theory explaining the sudden onset of the Younger Dryas cooling period. This circulation system acts as a central heating mechanism for the planet, and its disruption naturally resulted in significant cooling. The underlying cause of this interruption, specifically why the Gulf Stream was cut off, remains unexplained. The Younger Dryas impact hypothesis offers an elegant and satisfactory solution to this problem. This hypothesis extends beyond the immediate disruption of ocean currents. Scientists such as Bill Napier, an astrophysicist and astronomer, have compiled substantial evidence indicating that the torrid meteor stream, which the Earth still encounters twice annually, was responsible for the Younger Dryas impact event. The meteor stream, approximately 30 million kilometers wide, takes the Earth a couple of days to traverse its orbit, passing through in June and at the end of October. It is suggested that the torrid meteor stream originated from a very large comet that entered the solar system around 20,000 years ago, coming from the Oort cloud. The comet became trapped by the sun's gravity and entered an orbit that crosses the Earth's path. Initially, as a single object, the likelihood of a collision with the Earth was minimal. However, as the comet broke up into multiple fragments, chunks of rock held together by ice, the debris stream expanded, increasing the probability of impacts. Approximately 12,800 years ago, the Earth passed through a particularly dense region of the torrid meteor stream, resulting in multiple impacts across the planet. 
These impacts, likely air bursts rather than crater forming events, occurred from Western North America to Syria. Similar to the Tunguska event in Siberia in 1908, these air bursts involved cometary fragments 100 or 150 meters in diameter, which disintegrated in the atmosphere rather than reaching the Earth's surface. The hypothesis suggests that there were hundreds of such air bursts globally, accompanied by larger objects that struck the North American ice cap and possibly the northern European ice cap. These impacts led to a sudden and unexplained flood of meltwater entering the world ocean, causing the rapid cooling characteristic of the Younger Dryas period. This event had catastrophic consequences for life worldwide. One significant site of evidence is Abu Huraira, a settlement within 150 miles of Gobekli Tepe. At this site, the younger Dryas boundary layer contains overwhelming evidence of air bursts, including shocked quartz, carbon microspherules, nano diamonds, and trinitite. The settlement was obliterated 12,800 years ago, but was re inhabited within five years, suggesting that the inhabitants witnessed massive explosions in the sky and the destruction of Abu Huraira. While the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis remains a hypothesis supported by numerous scientists across various disciplines, it faces opposition and has been subject to several peer-reviewed papers attempting to debunk it. Despite differing viewpoints such as those of Robert Schoch, who attributes the Younger Dryas event to a massive solar outburst, the hypothesis remains one of the most persuasive explanations for the evidence surrounding the Younger Dryas period. The Great Pyramid and the Sphinx of Giza The astronomy associated with the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx of Giza is particularly intriguing. John Anthony West, who passed away in 2018, was the first modern individual to propose that the Sphinx might be much older than previously thought. He derived this idea from a philosopher named Schwala de Lubitsch, who observed what he believed to be water erosion on the body of the Sphinx. John West was deeply knowledgeable about ancient Egypt. Upon examining the Sphinx, he noticed unusual scalloped erosion patterns and vertical fissures, especially in the trench surrounding the monument. This led him to consider the possibility of ancient flooding in the area. A geologist from Boston University was the next key figure in this investigation. He was the first geologist to challenge the prevailing Egyptological views by suggesting that the Sphinx had been exposed to at least a thousand years of heavy rainfall. His ongoing research has continually pushed back the estimated date of the Sphinx's creation to approximately 12,000 or 12,500 years ago, aligning it with the Younger Dryas period. During the Ice Age, the Sahara was a vastly different environment, characterized by rivers, lakes, fertility, and significant rainfall. In contrast, present-day Giza experiences minimal rainfall, insufficient to cause the erosion observed on the Sphinx. This stark difference supports the theory that the Sphinx dates back to a time when the Sahara was much wetter. Robert Boval also played a crucial role in this exploration. Despite facing significant health challenges and criticism from Egyptologists, Boval identified a remarkable alignment between the three pyramids of Giza and the three stars of Orion's belt. Skeptics argue that such alignments can be coincidental, but Orion is not just any constellation. In ancient Egyptian belief, Orion represented the god Osiris, known as Sahu. The alignment suggests that the pyramids were intentionally designed to mirror the celestial image of this deity. When considering the precession of the stars, an additional layer of complexity emerges. The current orientation of the pyramids does not precisely match how Orion's belt appeared 4,500 years ago. However, 
When precessed back to around 12,500 years ago, during the Younger Dryas, the alignment becomes perfect. This timing coincides with the Great Sphinx being an equinoctial monument, aligned perfectly with the rising sun on the spring equinox. Observers at Giza on the 21st of March before dawn can witness the sun rising directly in line with the gaze of the Sphinx. Interestingly, 12,500 years ago, the constellation behind the Sphinx was Leo, which closely resembles the shape of the Sphinx itself. It is believed that the Sphinx was originally a lion. Over millennia, erosion and sand coverage damaged the monument, particularly the head. By the time of the Fourth Dynasty, when the Great Pyramids were constructed, the original lion head was in disrepair and was recarved into a pharaonic head, now recognized as the Pharaoh Khafre, adorned with the traditional Nimes headdress. This transformation suggests that the Sphinx was initially a lion-headed monument, aligning celestial observations with terrestrial structures. The Giza Plateau presents several astronomical alignments that are difficult to attribute to chance. The three Great Pyramids and the Great Sphinx align astronomically to a date around 10,500 years before Christ, coinciding with the Younger Dryas period. Additionally, computer simulations of the night sky from that time show the Milky Way prominently mirrored by the Nile River, further supporting the astronomical significance of these monuments. These observations challenge traditional archaeological interpretations and suggest that the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx of Giza may hold deeper astronomical and historical significance than previously acknowledged. The astronomy associated with the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx of Giza continues to captivate and puzzle researchers. The Milky Way, a prominent feature in the night sky, appears to be mirrored on the ground by the River Nile, suggesting a deliberate astronomical alignment. This alignment may be one of the reasons why Giza was chosen as the site for these monumental structures. The central idea is that an astronomical design on the ground, which memorializes a very ancient date, does not necessarily mean it was constructed 12,500 years ago. From the perspective of ancient Egyptians 4,500 years ago, referencing a date 8,000 years earlier, such a memorialization could be achieved through astronomical language and megalithic architecture. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence is the erosion patterns observed on the Sphinx. These patterns strongly indicate that the Sphinx dates back to 12,500 years ago, coinciding with the younger Dryas period. Accompanying the Sphinx are megalithic temples, including the Valley Temple located just to the east and south of the Sphinx, and the largely destroyed Sphinx Temple directly in front of the monument. The Valley Temple, which some attribute to Pharaoh Khafre without substantial evidence, is a massive construction featuring limestone blocks weighing up to 100 tons each. These limestone blocks have been meticulously remodeled and refaced with granite, precisely cut to fit the existing erosion marks on the older megalithic blocks. This intentional integration suggests that the structures at Giza are far more ancient and complex than traditionally acknowledged. Giza is undeniably a complicated site. While it is clear that the dynastic ancient Egyptians were closely involved in the construction of the Great Pyramids as they appear today, it is proposed that there were much older platforms on the Giza Plateau. The current pyramids are believed to be renovations, restorations, and enhancements of these older structures that existed long before their construction. Notably, the Great Pyramid is built around a natural hill, which may have been perceived by the ancient Egyptians as the original primeval mound, a foundational element in their cosmology. 
the hypothesis suggests that the Sphinx was in place long before the pyramids, serving as a guardian of an already sacred site. The pyramids were subsequently built by the Egyptians to further honor and celebrate this already holy place. Evidence supporting this includes the presence of older platforms where the pyramids now stand, indicating that the groundwork for these monumental structures was established well before the pyramids were constructed. Egyptologists have provided various attributions and datings for the pyramids and the Sphinx, primarily based on archaeological findings and historical records. According to Orthodox chronology, the first pyramid is attributed to Pharaoh Djoser, known as the Steppe Pyramid at Saqqara, built approximately 100 years before the Giza Pyramids. During the Fourth Dynasty, an apparent explosion in pyramid construction occurred, with Pharaoh Sneferu reportedly building the pyramid at Maidum and the Bent and Red Pyramids at Dashur. Within the same century, the Giza Pyramids were constructed. Following this period, pyramid building in ancient Egypt declined sharply, with Fifth Dynasty pyramids being markedly inferior in construction quality. Unlike the Giza pyramids, these later pyramids are extensively covered in hieroglyphs and imagery, primarily repeating the names of the kings they were supposed to house, whereas the Giza pyramids lack internal inscriptions, save for a controversial piece of graffiti. The Great Pyramid itself is an architectural marvel. It stands as a six million ton structure, with each side measuring approximately 750 feet in length. The pyramid is aligned almost perfectly to true north, south, east and west, within three sixtieths of a single degree, showcasing extraordinary precision in orientation. The sheer size, combined with the complex internal passageways, underscores the advanced knowledge and skills involved in its construction. In the 9th century, the Great Pyramid still retained its facing stones. An Arab caliph named Khalifa al-Mamun attempted to locate the pyramid's entrance, which was unknown at the time. Believing the entrance to be on the north face, he organized a team of workers equipped with sledgehammers to breach the structure. Their efforts led to the discovery of a cavity within the pyramid, connecting to the existing descending and ascending corridors. Notably, every internal passageway that people can walk through slopes at an angle of 26 degrees, contrasting with the exterior angle of 52 degrees. This discrepancy highlights the mathematical and geometric sophistication employed in the pyramid's design. These architectural features challenge traditional understandings of ancient Egyptian engineering and raise questions about the true origins and purposes of these monumental structures. The precision in alignment, the integration of astronomical observations, and the evidence of older constructions beneath the pyramids all suggest that the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx of Giza hold deeper astronomical and historical significance than previously acknowledged. This perspective invites a re-evaluation of ancient Egyptian history and the technological capabilities of early civilizations, opening the door to new interpretations and discoveries about our past. Continuing the exploration of the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx of Giza, Attention turns to the intricate internal structure of the Great Pyramid. Ascending the Grand Gallery, located at the end of the so-called Ascending Corridor and situated above the Queen's Chamber, leads to what is known as the King's Chamber. Within this chamber lies a sarcophagus that appears too large to have been placed through the narrow entrance passageway. This observation suggests that the king's chamber may have been constructed around the sarcophagus already in position. Above the king's chamber are five additional chambers, referred to as relieving chambers. 
The prevailing theory posits that these chambers were designed to alleviate the pressure exerted by the immense weight of the monument on the king's chamber. However, this theory is called into question by the presence of the queen's chamber, which is subjected to greater weight without any accompanying relieving chambers. This inconsistency challenges the conventional understanding of the pyramid's internal architecture. In the upper sections of these five chambers, a British adventurer named Howard Weiss, known for his destructive methods, claimed to have discovered graffiti left by a work gang bearing the name of Pharaoh Khufu. While a recognizable cartouche of Khufu is present, there is debate over its authenticity, with some suggesting that Weiss may have fabricated it for personal gain. Despite this controversy, Egyptologists often cite this as evidence attributing the Great Pyramid to Khufu. Additionally, the discovery of the Wadi al-Jarf papyri found on the Red Sea provides further support. These papyri include the diary of an individual named Merer, who documents the transportation of highly polished limestone to the Great Pyramid, clearly referencing the pyramid's facing stones during Khufu's reign. This evidence reinforces the attribution of the Great Pyramid's construction to Khufu, although it is posited that he was building upon and enhancing a much older structure. At the core of the Great Pyramid lies the subterranean chamber, situated 100 feet vertically beneath the pyramid's base. Accessing this chamber involves descending a corridor at a 26-degree slope for a distance of approximately 300 feet. The narrowness of the passageway requires a crawling motion to navigate effectively. Upon reaching the bottom, a short, horizontal passage leads directly into the subterranean chamber. According to Egyptological theory, this chamber was intended as the burial place of Khufu. However, after extensive excavation and alteration of the original passageway, it was decided not to bury him there. Subsequently, the Queen's Chamber and later the King's Chamber were constructed as alternative burial sites. Despite these efforts... Arab raiders under the leadership of Khalifa al-Mamun did not discover any remains within the Great Pyramid. The hypothesis suggests that the Sphinx and certain aspects of the pyramid predate the dynastic ancient Egyptians. This implies a transfer of knowledge and technology from an older civilization that was largely destroyed or scattered globally during the Younger Dryas period. Survivors of this cataclysm may have sought refuge and carried with them advanced knowledge of the stars, navigation, and construction techniques. This knowledge was preserved and transmitted through secretive groups eventually being incorporated into the fourth dynasty of ancient Egypt. Ancient Egyptian law references an epoch known as Zep Tepi, meaning the first time when the gods walked the earth and seven sages imparted wisdom to humanity. These king lists, which extend far beyond the recognized first dynasty into what Egyptologists consider mythical times, hint at a much more ancient origin of Egyptian civilization. Secret societies such as the followers of Horus and the souls of Pi and Nekan are believed to have safeguarded and transmitted this ancient knowledge over millennia. This preserved knowledge eventually manifested in the architectural and astronomical achievements of the Fourth Dynasty, including the construction of the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx. The notion that knowledge could be transferred and preserved over thousands of years is not without precedent. For instance, ancient Israelic traditions trace knowledge preservation back to the time of Abraham, approximately 2,000 years before Christ. This demonstrates the plausibility of knowledge retention over extended periods, supporting the idea that even more ancient knowledge could have been preserved and later integrated into subsequent civilizations. The Great Pyramid itself stands as a testament to this enduring legacy. It is a six million ton structure with each side measuring approximately 750 feet in length. 
The pyramid is aligned almost perfectly to true, north, south, east, and west, within three sixtieths of a single degree, showcasing extraordinary precision. The internal passageways, with their complex geometry and precise angles, further underscore the advanced mathematical and engineering skills employed in its construction. In the 9th century, the Great Pyramid retained its facing stones until an Arab caliph named Khalifa al-Mamun sought to locate its entrance. Believing it to be on the north face, he organized a team equipped with sledgehammers to breach the structure. Their efforts led to the discovery of a cavity within the pyramid, connecting to the existing descending and ascending corridors. Notably, every internal passageway that can be traversed slopes at an angle of 26 degrees, contrasting with the exterior angle of 52 degrees. This discrepancy highlights the mathematical sophistication involved in the pyramid's design. These architectural features challenge traditional understandings of ancient Egyptian engineering and raise questions about the true origins and purposes of these monumental structures. The precision in alignment, the integration of astronomical observations, and the evidence of older constructions beneath the pyramids all suggest that the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx of Giza hold deeper astronomical and historical significance than previously acknowledged. If an advanced Ice Age civilization existed, determining its location is a complex challenge. The Sahara Desert and the Amazon rainforest emerge as prime candidates for such a discovery. During the Ice Age, the Sahara was not the arid desert we know today. Instead, it experienced a warm and wet period, making it exceptionally fertile and suitable for human habitation. Despite its vast size, approximately 9 million square kilometers, archaeological exploration in the Sahara remains minimal, with only a tiny fraction of the region having been studied. To truly understand the origins of ancient Egyptian civilization and its people, extensive research in the Sahara is essential. Similarly, the Amazon rainforest, covering about 5 to 6 million square kilometers under its dense canopy, represents another significant area for potential discoveries. Additionally, the continental shelves submerged by rising sea levels at the end of the Ice Age offer promising sites for uncovering remnants of lost civilizations. It is well established that sea levels rose by approximately 400 feet over a period of 10,000 years. This rise did not occur uniformly but in stages. The possibility of an advanced civilization spread across the globe is considered, particularly if expert navigators were involved. The gaps in the archaeological record are not random, but are concentrated in regions that were hospitable during the Ice Age. Northern Europe, characterized by its harsh and frozen environment during this period, is deemed an unlikely location for such a civilization. Instead, attention is directed towards areas like the Sahara Desert, the Amazon Rainforest, and submerged coastal regions that would have provided favorable conditions for human life. This hypothesis suggests that a seafaring and navigationally adept civilization likely existed in multiple locations, adapting to various environments and potentially spreading their knowledge globally. Ancient maps which demonstrate remarkable navigational and astronomical expertise, further support the idea of a sophisticated civilization with a global reach. The transmission of this advanced knowledge is believed to have been preserved by secretive groups or societies, ensuring its survival through millennia until it was integrated into later civilizations, such as that of ancient Egypt. Gobekli Tepe, an archaeological site, is viewed as a time capsule that could potentially hold records or archives of this lost civilization. The notion of a hall of records beneath the Sphinx is proposed, drawing from both mystical associations and ancient Egyptian traditions. 
This hall is theorized to contain invaluable knowledge preserved from the time of the Younger Dryas Cataclysm, which may have led to the scattering of this civilization across the globe in search of refuge. Gobekli Tepe itself is considered a hall of records, memorializing a date around 12,800 years ago, marking the beginning of the Younger Dryas impact event. This site, along with the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx of Giza, is believed to encode significant astronomical dates through their architectural alignments. For instance, the three Great Pyramids of Giza align with Orion's Belt, as it appeared 10,500 years before Christ, while the Sphinx aligns with the constellation Leo, reflecting celestial observations from 12,500 years ago. What is panspermia? It's just fascinating, especially the farther back one goes. The past holds an abundance of enigmas, which some archaeologists attempt to diminish by reducing historical narratives to mere scientific data. This approach is most unfortunate because the past is profoundly mysterious and the entire story of life on Earth remains deeply enigmatic. Tracing back to the formation of the Earth itself, Approximately four and a half billion years ago, the planet was initially incredibly hot and inhospitable to life for the next several hundred million years. Dr. Crick pointed out something odd. Within 100 million years of the Earth becoming cool enough to support life, bacterial life had already emerged and spread across the planet. Crick suggested that life had been brought here through a process called panspermia. This idea posits that comets may carry bacteria seeding life on planets. Specifically, Crick discussed directed panspermia, envisioning an advanced alien civilization far away across the galaxy facing extinction, perhaps due to an impending supernova. These highly advanced beings first considered populating another planet, but the vast distances of interstellar space made this unfeasible. Instead, they opted to preserve their DNA by placing genetically engineered bacteria into cryogenic chambers and launching them into the universe in all directions. According to Crick's theory, one of these cryogenic containers containing bacterial life from another solar system crashed into the early Earth, leading to the sudden emergence of life here. Looking ahead, if human civilization continues to advance, one potential method for preserving life beyond Earth could involve creating backups by sending cryogenic chambers filled with genetically engineered organisms into the universe. These organisms would carry the potential for further evolution in various environments, effectively planting the seeds of human life across different hospitable locations. The fundamental elements required for consciousness and complex life could be embedded within the initial DNA of these bacteria, allowing evolutionary forces to shape life in diverse ways, depending on the environments encountered. There are countless interesting mysteries along the way. For example, for three billion years, life existed solely as single-cell organisms. It seems that life was thriving for single-celled organisms without the need for multicellularity or more complex forms like animals. This raises the question, why did it take such a long time to make that evolutionary leap? Was it because the transition is exceptionally difficult and what was the driving force behind such a significant change? Similarly, the evolution of Homo sapiens involves its own set of fascinating mysteries. What was the magic leap that allowed Homo sapiens to outcompete Neanderthals and other competitors? Why are Neanderthals no longer present? These questions highlight the complexities of human evolution and the factors that contributed to the dominance of Homo sapiens. It feels like the more radical ideas about our past that are proposed, taken seriously and explored, 
the closer humanity moves to solving the intricate puzzle that leads all the way back to Homo sapiens and perhaps even to the origin of life on Earth. Homo sapiens represent the tail end of a very long, deep series of mysteries that trace back to the beginning of life on this planet and probably long before, as the Earth is part of the vast universe. The evolution of Homo sapiens involves several theories about what drove this remarkable development. One theory suggests that the use of fire, leading to the consumption of meat and cooking, provided the necessary fuel for the brain to grow. Another theory emphasizes social interaction, where the ability to use imagination to construct and share ideas and stories offered significant evolutionary advantages. Anatomically modern humans and Neanderthals coexisted in Europe for at least 10,000 years, possibly more. One popular view is that anatomically modern humans wiped out the Neanderthals. But there is also evidence of interbreeding between the two groups. In a sense, Neanderthals are not entirely gone as their genetic legacy persists within modern humans. Another theory suggests that Neanderthals practiced ritual cannibalism, particularly the consumption of human brains, which could have led to diseases like Kuru, capable of decimating entire populations. There are numerous possibilities regarding why Neanderthals did not survive the rise of Homo sapiens. It could be that modern humans simply outcompeted them, or perhaps Homo sapiens possessed more efficient brain structures despite Neanderthals having larger brains. The reality is that Neanderthals and Denisovans did not survive the emergence of Homo sapiens. It is particularly interesting that all hominids seem to be explorers. The widespread distribution of Homo erectus across the planet more than one million years ago is a testament to this exploratory urge. This fundamental drive to explore and understand the past continues to inspire ongoing efforts to uncover and interpret the profound mysteries of human history and the origins of life on Earth. By exercising this urge to explore the past in unique ways, humanity forges its own path and defines its own route towards deeper understanding. Shamanism Shamanism marks the significant leap from non-human to human civilization. It serves as the primary driver and inspiration behind the formation of human societies. Shamanism is regarded as the origin of all valuable aspects of humanity and is considered the earliest form of scientific inquiry. Observations of shamans in the Amazon reveal that they are constantly experimenting with plants in a highly scientific manner. They meticulously test various combinations and methods, such as adding a pinch of one ingredient to another in the ayahuasca brew to enhance or alter its effects. These individuals functioned as scientists within hunter-forager societies and served as the ancient leaders of human civilization. All civilizations are believed to arise from shamanistic practices, which inherently involve experimentation, exploration and investigation of the surrounding environment. It is suggested that one or more groups advanced their study of the skies, developing navigational techniques that enabled sailing and exploration of the earth. Behind this progress lies the same curiosity and investigative skills that shamans continue to utilize today in the Amazon. Shamans are seen as scientists in the truest sense of the word, driving the advancement of human knowledge and society. Ayahuasca played a crucial role in this process. Ayahuasca is the result of shamanistic exploration of available resources in the Amazon. The term ayahuasca originates from the Quechuan language, meaning the vine of souls or the vine of the dead. The ayahuasca brew consists of two primary ingredients, the ayahuasca vine and leaves containing dimethyltryptamine. The vine is combined with leaves from plants such as Psychotria viridis, known as chacruna in the Amazon, or Diplopteris cabrerana. 
These leaves are rich in dimethyltryptamine, arguably the most powerful psychedelic known to science. The ayahuasca vine alone does not produce a visionary journey. The leaves containing dimethyltryptamine are ineffective on their own due to the enzyme monoamine oxidase in the gut, which shuts down dimethyltryptamine when absorbed orally. To make dimethyltryptamine accessible, it must be combined with a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, resulting in the ayahuasca brew that enables extraordinary visionary experiences. The sophisticated chemistry involved in creating ayahuasca highlights the extensive experimentation undertaken by shamans. With tens of thousands of plant species in the Amazon, only a few combinations result in these profound visionary states. Ayahuasca is considered the master of plant medicines for accessing mysterious realms, capable of inducing encounters with sentient beings who impart moral lessons. The mixture of two plants in ayahuasca causes individuals to reflect deeply on their own behavior, recognizing how they may have hurt or affected others. This reflection fills them with a powerful desire not to repeat negative behaviors in the future. The more emotional baggage one carries, the more intense the ayahuasca experience becomes, forcing individuals to confront and take responsibility for their actions. This transformation is extraordinary, emerging from a simple plant brew. Ayahuasca is not the only plant medicine capable of accessing these mysterious realms. Other tryptamines, such as LSD and psilocybin mushrooms, can also induce visionary experiences when taken in large enough doses. However, ayahuasca remains the most powerful among them, effectively lowering the veil to what appears to be a seamlessly convincing other realm or world. While rational scientists may dismiss these experiences as mere fantasies of the brain, the true nature of consciousness remains elusive and not fully understood. There are two prevailing possibilities regarding consciousness. One is that consciousness is generated by the brain, much like a factory produces cars. The other is that the brain acts as a receiver of consciousness, similar to how a television set receives television signals. If the latter is true, then our consciousness is locked into the physical realm, with the everyday alert problem-solving state being highly valued by Western civilization. However, the other states of consciousness that allow access to alternative realities might be equally, if not more, important. Historical figures have also reported altered states of consciousness contributing to significant discoveries. For instance, after his role in the discovery of the double helix, Francis Crick reportedly had insights under the influence of LSD. Similarly, Carrie Mullis, who developed the polymerase chain reaction, claimed to have made his groundbreaking discovery while under the influence of LSD. These examples challenge the notion that the alert, problem-solving state of consciousness is the only valuable state, as visionary experiences have led to substantial scientific advancements. There remains an unresolved question about the nature of the entities encountered during these visionary states. Are they mere figments of the brain induced by drugs, or do they represent access to a parallel reality inhabited by non-physical consciousness? This question remains open, as not everyone encounters these entities during ayahuasca journeys. Some trips may not produce visible visions, yet shamans believe that valuable lessons are learned at a subconscious level, even if they are not consciously remembered. In addition to ayahuasca, there is a presence within the brew that is recognized by shamans. This presence is seen as the master of the process, harnessing the leaves to gain access to human consciousness. With sufficient exposure to ayahuasca or yage, individuals begin to feel an intelligent presence with a definite personality, often interpreted as feminine and referred to as Mother Ayahuasca. Some Amazonian tribes interpret this spirit as male, 
but in all cases the spirit is regarded as a teacher. Ayahuasca teaches moral lessons, encouraging individuals to reflect on their behavior and fostering a desire to become better members of their communities. The transformative power of ayahuasca lies in its ability to instill moral lessons and encourage personal responsibility. The more emotional baggage one carries, the more intense the experience becomes, pushing individuals to confront and change their negative behaviors. This profound impact underscores the significance of shamanistic practices in shaping human consciousness and societal values. Furthermore, ayahuasca and similar plant medicines have influenced the creation of myths and religious narratives. The visionary experiences induced by these substances have inspired cave paintings and rock art around the world, featuring geometric patterns and therianthropes, creatures that are part animal and part human. Scientific research continues to explore the therapeutic and consciousness-expanding potential of psychedelics. Studies at institutions like Imperial College in London and the University of California at San Diego are investigating the effects of extended DMT states using technologies like DMTX, which allows individuals to remain in a peak DMT state for hours. These studies aim to understand the consistent experiences of encountering sentient others who impart moral lessons, highlighting the profound impact of psychedelics on human consciousness. The integration of psychedelics into modern scientific frameworks offers valuable insights into the origins and evolution of human consciousness and societal structures. By harnessing the transformative power of plant medicines like ayahuasca, humanity continues to explore the depths of consciousness fostering personal growth and the development of cohesive, nurturing communities. How the Great Pyramid was built. Looking into the future, particularly over the next 100 years, there is immense hope for groundbreaking discoveries in archaeology. Among the most intriguing mysteries is understanding how the Great Pyramid was constructed. With advancements in scanning technology, it has become evident that there are numerous major voids within the Great Pyramid. For instance, right above the Grand Gallery, a second Grand Gallery has been identified through remote scanning, and new chambers have already been discovered as a result. This suggests that the Great Pyramid may ultimately reveal its long-held secrets. The Great Pyramid is often perceived as more than just a monumental tomb. Its sheer scale, precise orientation to true north, and immense weight of six million tons indicate a purpose beyond mere burial. The presence of two shafts in the so-called Queen's Chamber, their sloping paths through the pyramid's body, and the multiple doors encountered by robots sent through these shafts all point to a structure that is actively engaging those who study it. For example, when a robot is sent up these shafts, it encounters a blockage after about 160 feet by a door with metal handles. Drilling through that door reveals another door three or four feet away. This sequence suggests that the pyramid is encouraging persistent exploration, promising that answers will eventually be found. The motivation behind the Great Pyramid's construction appears to have a cosmic dimension. The concept of as above, so below, derived from the Hermetica and reflecting ancient Egyptian ideas, suggests that the pyramid was designed to mirror the perfection of the heavens on Earth. This alignment indicates that the Great Pyramid was not merely a tomb, but a monumental structure with deeper astronomical and spiritual significance intended to bridge the earthly and celestial realms. Traditional theories about the construction methods, such as the use of ramps and wet sand, fall short in explaining how the Great Pyramid was built. While ancient Egyptians did use sledges on wet sand to transport heavy stones, 
This method is insufficient for lifting dozens of 70-ton granite blocks to heights of 300 feet to form the roof of the king's chamber and the subsequent chambers above it. Additionally, the absence of any remnants of such massive ramps further complicates the understanding of the pyramid's construction. The lack of evidence for these proposed ramps suggests that the true methods employed by the ancient builders remain elusive, leaving the question of how the Great Pyramid was constructed as one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of the past. Comparing ancient megalithic structures to modern endeavors highlights the enduring legacy of such monuments. For example, the 10,000-year clock built by Jeff Bezos and Danny Hillis in the Sierra Diablo Mountains in Texas exemplifies a contemporary attempt to create a lasting monument that could survive potential future catastrophes. This clock is designed to tick once a year for 10,000 years, serving as a beacon for future civilizations to discover and analyze, much like the Great Pyramid invites ongoing exploration and discovery. In contrast, most modern constructions are not built to withstand the test of millennia. Unlike the Great Pyramid, which continues to stand as a testament to ancient ingenuity and mystery, Contemporary structures are unlikely to endure beyond a few thousand years. The deliberate burial of Gobekli Tepe, another megalithic site, exemplifies how ancient civilizations created enduring monuments that remained untouched for thousands of years, preserving their intricate carvings and structures for future generations to uncover. The hope is that future archaeological advancements will finally unravel the secrets of the Great Pyramid, revealing not only the methods of its construction, but also the profound cosmic motivations behind its design. Such revelations would provide deeper insights into the advanced knowledge and spiritual beliefs of ancient civilizations, bridging the gap between the known and the mysterious aspects of human history. As technology continues to evolve, the possibility of uncovering the true purpose and construction techniques of the Great Pyramid becomes increasingly attainable, promising to shed light on one of humanity's most enduring and enigmatic monuments. The notion of cosmic motivation behind the Great Pyramid is compelling. The idea of as above, so below, originating from the Hermetica and reflecting ancient Egyptian philosophy, indicates that the pyramid was designed to mirror the perfection of the heavens on earth. This suggests that the Great Pyramid was intended not only as a tomb, but also as a structure with profound astronomical and spiritual significance, bridging the earthly and celestial realms. Beyond the traditional ideas of using ramps and wet sand for construction, there is a belief that more sophisticated methods were employed. The use of ramps, although proposed, remains unsubstantiated due to the lack of any physical remnants. Transporting blocks weighing up to 70 tons to heights of 300 feet would require ramps extending over a mile with a 10-degree slope, constructed from very solid material. The absence of such ramps raises questions about the actual construction techniques used, making the process one of the greatest mysteries from the past. Modern attempts to create enduring monuments, such as the 10,000-year clock in Texas, reflect a similar desire to leave a lasting legacy for future civilizations. However, unlike the Great Pyramid, most contemporary structures are not built to endure for millennia. The deliberate burial of Gobekli Tepe, which remained untouched for over 10,000 years, serves as an example of how ancient monuments have withstood the test of time, preserving their intricate details for future discovery. Ultimately, the Great Pyramid stands as a testament to ancient ingenuity and mystery. The ongoing advancements in archaeological technology hold the promise of finally uncovering its secrets, providing insights into the advanced knowledge and spiritual beliefs of ancient civilizations. 
As exploration continues, the Great Pyramid may one day reveal the true purpose and methods behind its construction, bridging the gap between the known and the enigmatic aspects of human history. The pyramids, along with some of the other remarkable structures built by humans, appear to be the result of humanity's struggle with mortality. At the heart of many pyramids around the world is their connection to the notion of death and the exploration of the afterlife. This fundamental mystery is one that all human beings face. Despite the desire to ignore it or pretend it does not exist, Mortality is an inevitable reality for everyone on the planet. The universal question remains, what happens after death? Several cultures have intensely and deeply studied this mystery. Unlike these, the general view of science often regards humans as mere accidents of evolution, where consciousness ceases upon death and there's no continuation of the soul. However, this perspective is not definitively proven, as there is no experiment that conclusively verifies the non-existence of the soul. While death is certain, the existence of a soul remains an unresolved question. This great mystery is shared by all, and cultures that have delved into it, with ancient Egypt being the most prominent example, have meticulously mapped out the journey that individuals make after death. The concept of a journey after death, fraught with hazards and challenges leading to a final judgment, is a notion found worldwide. It is even reflected in the three monotheistic faiths that persist today. Ancient Egyptian beliefs, encapsulated in their elaborate burial practices and monumental tombs like the pyramids, demonstrate a profound engagement with the afterlife. These structures were designed not only as tombs, but as gateways to the next realm, illustrating the deep spiritual and astronomical significance attributed to death and what lies beyond. This intricate mapping of the afterlife journey highlights the advanced spiritual beliefs and the enduring legacy of ancient civilizations in their quest to understand and transcend mortality.